believe to the saving of the soul. Now, I hand the time to the pastor who will bring God's word to us when we prepare our hearts. How about we all stand and pray for God's help for the preaching of His word? Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, we are conscious of the difficult time we live in, and yet we are so thankful to you that we can still meet over the air, so to say. And Lord, may your Spirit fill each one of us so that even though we are absent from one another, in bodies, we pray that we may be one in spirit to worship you, to listen to your word. Speak, Lord, for your servants are going to hear you speaking to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. You will be really helpful anytime in worship, but especially this morning, to have your Bible open uh, to Psalm 42 and please uh, follow and I shall mention a number of uh, Bible references as usual. This morning we're going to look at Psalm 42 verses 1 to 6. To the chief musician, a contemplation of the sons of Korah. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept, that kept a pilgrim's feast. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. Psalms 42 and 43 are twin psalms. The psalmist here is in deep depression because he can't go to the public worship of God. And in these two psalms, he's facing his depression head on. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is of course part of the Holy Scripture to instruct us and to help us, especially in a time like ours. We're going to consider this psalm or the first five verses under three headings, longing for God, missing public worship, and our present duty. The psalmist begins telling us about his Panting for God, as a deer pant for the water brooks. You got the idea? A thirsty deer, longing for water, is panting and panting for the water brooks. So pants my soul for you, O oh God. I'm longing for you. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Dear friends, we are made for the fellowship with God. God make us to know Him, to serve Him and to worship Him. But because of sin, we are born with an aversion to worship. Without God's grace, naturally, we want to run away from God. We will be hiding from God like Adam and Eve after they rebelled against God. They were trying to hide from God's presence. But when we are saved by grace, we begin to long for God. 
As we grow in grace, we long for God more and more. And that's why we, each one of us, need to ask ourselves some searching questions. Do I long for God? Do I desire God? Am I like David in another psalm, Psalm 63? David was in the wilderness, and he says in verse 1, Psalm 63, O God, you are my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there's no water. We can endure hunger for a few hours, for a day, or two, or even more. But thirst, thirstiness, is something that we cannot endure. And David says in Psalm 63, I, I thirst for you. In Psalm 42, the same, thirsting for God. And in Psalm 63, verse 2, he goes on to say, So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. Oh, David says, Oh Lord, oh God, oh my God, your loving kindness is better than life. Well, Psalm 63 has the same situation as in Psalm 42. David is the author of both Psalms, and in both circumstances, uh, he was away from the worship of God. In Psalm 63, he was in the wilderness, most likely uh, fleeing from some persecution. How can we Communion with God. A very important means of communion with God is public worship. Now public worship is not the only means, but the, but the supreme means and the primary means. Otherwise, why would the psalmist be so upset? Why would David long so much for God in the wilderness? Surely David has God in the wilderness. God was with him there. He could pray. He could have private communion with God. But David could not have the public worship of God in the wilderness. Yes, he could have private devotion. He could sing to God. After all, he wrote his two psalms. But away from God's people, away from the public worship of God, he missed something really dear to his soul and his heart. It was the Puritan conviction that on the Lord's day, the public worship of God has our first priority. It even has a greater priority over our own personal private devotion. What a conviction that seems to be unusual in our time. So here David is longing for God, but is missing worship. Go back to Psalm 42 in your Bible. Verse 2. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? When can I come back to worship? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? When I remember these things, verse 4, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with a multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Oh friends, while we are thankful that we can meet like this, and I must say how thankful uh, we should be to God for Tim's help this morning and for Stephen's help. Uh, also, uh, 
You don't see Stephen in this uh, video, but he has devoted so much of his time and energy and resources to help us. But I want to say this to you. Virtual church is not church. What we are doing now is abnormal. It's like hospital. Hospital is not our home. We may need to stay in the hospital from time to time. Hopefully not too many times. But as soon as we get in the hospital, we want to get out of it. That should be our attitude. What is happening today all over the world in relation to the suspension of all public worship is God's severe dealing with His church. I'm not an expert in church history, but I think this is the first time ever that the worldwide church cannot meet physical. This is the first time in all human history that almost all churches have to close down for service. Even in times of persecution, Christian people would meet in secret, in house churches. But today, conscientious Christians obey the command of their own government. We know the government is not persecuting us. It is for good reason, for necessary reason, that we cannot meet physically. And yet, my dear friends, let us understand. This is the Lord's chastening for the church's disregard for the public worship of His name for so long a time. God's hand is heavy upon us. We have not esteemed worship as we should. We have not treasured the worship of God's holy name. I shall, I shall only mention the modern day evangelicals. We are part of that. We have slighted the public worship of God for so long a time. We make worship to be a fun time, to be entertainment something trivial, something non-essential. Modern day Christians, so many of them have got used to not attending church or just turn up in church every now and then. And even for us who turn up in church, there we must confess with so little yearning for the meeting with the Lord. We used to have the freedom and a facility for public worship and we didn't treasure it and now in one go both our freedom and our facility for public worship are taken from us overnight but friends we're facing I believe a greater temptation to neglect church even more because of this we will be tempted to get used to not having church in person. We may have virtual church, but you know, we can easily sleep out. And we are tempted to disregard the Lord's day even more. Why is public worship so important? Why? Why do we have to meet physically in person? I'll tell you why. Because in the public worship of God, we have the special presence of God. Psalm 42 verse 5. The psalmist talks about the help of God's countenance. And he mentions that again and again. In the public worship of God, with the saving presence of God, we have the help of God's face upon us. Remember our Lord Jesus' promise. Wherever two or three are gathered in His name, there He'll be in the midst of that. 
Is Jesus absent when we pray alone in our bedroom? Of course not. He's with us in our private devotion. But in the public worship of God, Jesus, our Lord, promises His special presence, His nearer presence, His special blessing in public worship. In Hebrews chapter 2, the Lord Jesus declares, He says, I will declare God's name. He's saying to God, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the assembly. The assembly, Greek ecclesia, where we have the word church. He said, Jesus says, in the midst of the assembly, in the ecclesia, I will sing praise to you. And then he says to God, here am I and the children God has given me. Remember, our Lord Jesus is the worship leader in all our services. Christ gives us his special presence by sending his own spirit to be among us. In Hebrew chapter 12, verse 23, The Apostle says about Christian people coming to the general assembly and church at Plesia again of the firstborn of register in heaven to God the judge of all. In public worship we come in assembly in Ecclesia to God the judge of all. And that's why we are explicitly warned in Hebrew chapter 10 not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the man of some but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching we are commanded to value the public worship of God we are commanded not to forsake the ecclesia, the assembling together. And as we see each other, we are to exhort one another. And as we see the day of Christ, we turn approaching. And before that verse in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, we are told we should consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We're to consider our brethren, our sister, in our local congregation, what are their situation, what are their particular problems or witnesses or temptations and opportunities, and we're to provoke them to greater love, greater love for God, for the church, for other people. And good works, we're to do what is good, not just in giving, but also in living living a life that is well-pleasing to God. And that's why, my dear friend, it is essential that we should meet. No assembly, no ecclesia, there is no church. So I come back to this point. What is happening now is God's judgment upon His church as well as a warning to the whole world. If you are quick, you can turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. There we are told that judgment will begin at the house of God. You got that? God says judgment will begin with the house of God. Judgment begins with the church. The judgment begins with Christ's people. What will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel? So bear that in mind. But for the time being, we cannot meet. And we do not know for how long, for how much longer, we are not allowed to meet. So what shall we do? What is our present duty? Go back to Psalm 42. Can you not notice? 
The psalmist is very upset. He's deeply depressed. Verse 5, he says to himself, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Verse 6, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Verse 11, Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Chapter 43, verse 2. He's saying to God, Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning? Verse 5, again, Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? You can't tell. David is very sad. He is in deep depression. He's so upset. Last Sunday night, at about 9.30 when I first heard that the government does not allow us to meet, I just wanted to cry. I was so upset, I was so confused. I just wanted to cry. But who am I? I wanted to cry, but there was no tears. And my mind went blank for a few days. I was just so sad and so upset. I did not know what to do. And for two or three days, I was crying with God to give me wisdom to lead you people in such a time, to minister to you in such a time. So our first duty is that we should be upset. We should be sad. God forbid that we should treat things as normal. God forbid that we should say, ah, today it's good, I don't have to go to church, I don't have to travel. I can do my own things. Even more so than ever before. That would be terrible. We should feel sad. This is our responsibility. Remember what Jesus says? Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then friends, we should learn to talk to ourselves. Go back to Psalm 42, verse 1. He's speaking to himself. Why are you cast down my soul? And why is it within me? He preaches to himself, hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. My dear friends, we are to talk to ourselves, to preach to ourselves, and we have to learn to wait upon God, hope in God, for we shall yet praise him. We look forward to that day when we can meet physically again for the worship of God's holy name. And then we shall enjoy that special presence of Christ in our midst. Hope in God, for I shall, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. I almost got everything ready for our reopening Thanksgiving service. I think we're going to sing Psalm 103. Maybe we should look at that psalm on that occasion. But for the time being, let us, let us learn to wait upon God. For we shall yet praise Him. Unbelievers ask me, will this ever end? They're in despair. I told them, yes, it will end. How do you know? I know because the Lord is good, the Lord is patient. This is not the end of the world. How do you know this is not the end of the world? Because of what Jesus said in Matthew 24. With the end of the world, when he comes back, you shall be like a lightning. Everyone will know. There will be no waiting time. There will be no mistake. And friends, let me encourage you. Just as the rain poured down from heaven above and stopped the recent bush fire in our country, so this trouble will pass away. 
but a person is will you become slacker in attending worship? Will we repent? Are we going to take God's warning? Or are we going to treat the living and true God as not existing and, and does not matter? I told myself, Johnny, this is not your holiday. You're going to work hard. You're not going to let loose the ministry of God's word. You have to labor in the ministry of God's word more and in prayer more, in ministering to the people more. Worship matters. Assembly matters. Ecclesia matters. It matters to us because it matters to God. The Lord God of love and mercy, our good shepherd, is so eager to come in our midst to bless us with his holy presence. I do hope to see you tonight at 5 p.m. when we shall consider Psalm 69 and begin our meditation on the suffering of the Lord. Shall we pray? O oh God, have mercy upon us. Speak to our hearts. Help us to humble ourselves before you. To repent of our past unfaithfulness and spiritual slothfulness. We pray for those who are sick, especially for Judy Howard. O oh, have mercy upon her body and soul. Uphold God's comfort him. We pray for our leaders, for Prime Minister, for Premier, for the Presidents of America and China, for the Prime Minister of Britain, and all the world leaders give them much wisdom to govern to live in such a time. We cry to you that you may stay the spread of this deadly virus. We pray for those who are struck down that you may spare them and grant them your healing grace and mercy and help them to recover. And Lord our God, you know the burdens in our hearts. Some of us have dear ones living in the most affected areas. O oh Lord, keep them. And keep us faithful, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. Last but not the least, we pray for medical personnel, for our doctors and nurses, for the cleaners, for the clerical workers. They still have to go to work. They have to work much harder and they do so at the risk of their lives. They are the front line to protect us and to save us and to heal us. Oh God, protect them. Many of them are Christians. Give them special grace to witness to your name. And Lord our God, we know, we know, sadly, some of these frontline medical workers will suffer and even lay down their lives to save us. Even as Christ laid down his life to save us. Oh Lord, may they know you. Hear us, we pray. We are so thankful to you for the meeting we have over the air this morning. Thank you for your help. Keep us all from falling and present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy. In Jesus' name. Amen.